Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're making the traditional Chinese bun, the steamed scallion flour roll. If you still don't know the difference between bun and baos, also the dumplings and wonton, you should check out our last week's video, which I talk about the difference between each of them. I'll leave a link up here. So let's get into it. Hi new friend, this is Erica right here. I'm a Taiwanese citizen currently living in America. Cooking and traveling is my passion, so I'm here to share a few of my favorite Asian recipes. On top of that, all my videos cover a little food knowledge and a history background of the dish, as well as a Chinese lesson at the end of the video to teach you how to pronounce the dish that I'm making today in Chinese. So if that interests you, please subscribe and keep watching. Today we're making a Chinese scallion flour roll, which it is a type of bun. Legendarily, the first bun was appear around 1800 years ago in China. We have only talked about the basic storyline about the story last week, and I found the story very fascinating, so I did a little more research, and here we are. The legendary origin story of Chinese buns and baos. The Chinese bun is a kind of ancient Han nationality pastries. It is said that during the Three Kingdom period in China, which is around 200 AC, Zhuge Liang, the prime minister of the kingdom of Shu, led an army to attack the barbarian in the south, which they call them the Nan Man, which means the south barbarian. Keep this Chinese word in your mind real quick, we'll talk about it later again. The Nan Man, south barbarian. After a long fight, the leader of the barbarian finally surrendered and the army was ready to go home. For the army to return to the kingdom, they have to pass through a big river on the way. When a horse was about to cross the river, there was a sudden violent wind. The wave hit a thousand feet, the ghost cry, and the wolf howls. This is a straight translation from a really old document, so it might be a little dramatic, but stay with me. At this time, both army have been fighting for a very long time, and there's already a lot of death. And obviously, the dead soldier would not be able to go home and reunite with their family. So the prime minister Zhuge Liang really hoped that he could bring the rest of the army home safely. Therefore, the fortune teller, which back then was a really respected position in the kingdom, says that if the army want to safely cross the river, 49 of the barbarian head have to be sacrificed to the river to calm the wave. Well, that would really suck to live back then, right? But the extremely clever Zhuge Liang is not superstitious at all, and then he thought, there has been enough death for this war already, how could we kill 49 more lives for this nonsense? But he also understand that during that time, he still had to do something to encourage his army to not give up. So a brilliant idea strikes. He ordered the army chef to use the rice noodle as skin and then wrap the meat of black cattle and white sheep to shape 49's human heads buns. Then he used these buns to set up a ritual and sacrifice it to the river and they return home safe and sound. This story was passed down by generations, so we can't really tell if it's legit or not anymore, but I did found a document that was made in the Ming dynasty. A politician named Ming Lang recorded in his notebook, Mantou, which means the Chinese bun, was originally called Mantou. Well, it sounds the same, but it's a different character. In Chinese, this Mantou means buns, and this Mantou means barbarian's head. Remember the South Barbarian character that I tried to let you memorize earlier? It's right here. See? The character is the same. So up here, the Nan Man means the South Barbarian, and down here, the Manto, original Manto, means the Barbarian's head. It also says in the document that the Manto was created by the Prime Minister Zhuge Liang that we talked about earlier. And by then, the Manto was all made of beef and muttons. The processing is really complicated, and the cost was too high to duplicate at the time. As a result, the later generation simplified the stuffing process of the manto and then turned it into steamed bun. So since then, the non-stuffed bun become manto, the stuffed bun become baozi, and a special type of roll-up bun that looks like a flower become the flower roll, which is hua jun, and that's what we're making today. I really like a good story behind the food, and I hope you like it too. But without further ado, let me show you how to make this twist version of the Chinese life-saving steamed bun, the cong you hua jun. The ingredients we need today are very simple. For all buns, what we need is the flour, yeast, and water. But today I'm gonna do a little twist. I'm gonna using an almond milk instead of water. That will give the dough a little more creamy and better taste in my opinion. If you don't have almond milk, you can also use whole milk or oat milk. Any plant-based milk will do as well. And if you don't like the milk flavor, you can totally use water instead. And for the flour, this is the all-purpose flour. For the yeast, you can use any type of yeast. 
And obviously we're making a scallion flower roll bun today. We'll definitely need some scallions right here and also some sesame oil and salt for flavoring. The Asian buns and baos are different than the Western pastry. It's normally steamed, so today I'm gonna use my bamboo steamer right here. And inside, uh, it comes with some baking sheet inside that fit perfectly well for my bamboo steamer. If you don't have this, you can totally just cut a normal baking sheet and put it inside. You have to put in some holes into your baking sheet so steam can actually come up and cook the bun. If you don't have a bamboo steamer, any steamer will do. You don't need to have this. And of course, a rolling pin. And if you don't have a rolling pin, use any water bottle or anything that you can think of that can replace this. You don't need to buy it just for one bun. <laughs> and down here, you can see I have a pastry mat. This is not necessary as well. Like if you have a clean surface, a table, that will totally do. You don't need this, but I already have it, so I'm gonna use it. And as always, the actual amount of each ingredients will be in the description box down below. This recipe can make 12 rolls. If you like to make more or less, you can just adjust the proportion and you'll be just fine. First, let's get a mixing bowl and put in the flour, yeast, and warm milk. The definition of warm liquid is around 30 to 60 Celsius, which is around 90 to 140 Fahrenheit. Any temperature between this is fine. It doesn't need to be perfect. I just microwave my milk that I took out of the fridge for 20 seconds. Each microwave is very different, so you have to try it out for yourself. If you don't want to use milk, you can also use water as well. The reason why you want the warm liquid is that you want the yeast to be able to activate, but also not kill by the heat. Now, use a spatula to mix them roughly until the water is all absorbed by the flour. Then knead it into a dough with your hand. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, just cover it with the plate and let it rest for 15 minutes. Most people like to use a plastic wrap instead of the plate, but really, how much more plastic do we need in our ocean? So I think we can all agree that if a plate will do the trick, why wasting it, right? This 15 minutes rest is just to make your life a little easier because after the dough is rest, it will become easier to knead. And it will also have a smoother outcome as well. If you have a dough mixer, you can just knead it for 10 minutes straight without resting time. This hand kneading process will take you around three minutes. And when you feel that the dough is smooth and tight again, drizzle some olive oil on the dough to prevent it from sticking, then cover it up and let it ferment for 90 minutes. In the meantime, let's get our scallion ready. Wash and chop the scallion and heat up a pan with sesame oil to stir fry the scallion real quick. The scallion that has been stir fried first will have more flavor at the end and it will smell even better. But if you don't have time, you can also use the raw scallion with oil. Add in some salt and use low heat all the way in case it got burnt. Take it out right when it starts turning color, then set it aside to cool down. 90 minutes later, the dough is all riced up. You can see that it riced almost twice the size. Let's push out the air and put it onto the mat to knead. If you don't have a pastry mat, that is no problem. Just put some flour down on the table that will do the nonstick trick and you can knead your dough on basically any surface. Again, after around three minutes of kneading, the dough will start tightening up again so we'll let it rest for another 10 to 15 minutes again before we roll it out. Now the dough is ready to roll, we'll have to roll it into a flat, long rectangle shape. We want the dough to be around a quarter of an inch, which is around 0.6 centimeters thick. My rolling pin have a thickness control ring on the side so my dough can be evenly thick. If you don't have it, it's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. And after I roll it with my pin, I figured that this recipe, you can make a rectangle that is around 24 inches long with the six inch wide. Now, use a brush or spoon to evenly distribute the scallion oil onto the whole surface. Try to cover the whole dough as good as you can. When you're done with that, fold it two times. Pat it a little to get rid of the extra air and also make it stick better together each time you fold. And now we just need to cut the dough into around one inch thick strings and we can start to roll up the buns. Put two dough on top of each other and press it down with the chopstick like this. And lift it up, put your chopstick in the middle and fold it into half. And now twist the chopstick 360 degree and press straight down to the mat. You can see that the dough becomes super fluff and round. If your dough is too tight to do so, you can let it rest for another 10 minutes before you start rolling. Now you have the beautiful scallion flour roll. We'll do this one more time. 
Put two dough on top of each other and press it down with the chopsticks. And lift it up, put your chopstick in the middle and fold it into half. Now twist the chopstick 360 degree and press it straight down to the mat. Don't press the dough too much because you're gonna cut it into half, but also press it strong enough to stick the dough together. When you're done, put the rolls into your steamer and repeat it the same step until your steamer is full. And cover it and let it rest for one hour before steaming. This will make the dough even softer and bigger when you steam it. When the time is up, put some water into the wok and put the steamer on top of it. Turn on the heat and when you start to hear the water boiling or the steam coming out of the steamer, set a timer for 15 minutes. When the time is up, turn off the heat and give it a few minutes before you open the lid. And done! The Chinese galleon flour roll bun is ready. Wow, they come out beautifully with the tons of layers. It is super fluff and soft, you can even squish it real quick and then it will bounce right back. The scallion smells so good and you can also taste it with the hint of saltiness. I always make a whole batch of 12 and freeze it in the freezer. I'll re-steam two every morning and scramble up some tomato eggs and eat it together as my breakfast. Sometimes I'll have some side salad, avocado or fruit as well. A batch can last me around two weeks and I'll make it again. If you go get a pre-made bun like this in an Asian supermarket, nine buns will cost you around $3. So each of them is around 33 cents. That's not so cheap, isn't it? But if you make it yourself, each bun will only cost you around seven cents and you can see exactly what you put inside your bun. And enjoy it fresh. Now while we're enjoying our breakfast, let's learn some Chinese. The word of the day today is 葱油花卷 The scallion rolls The first word is 葱 葱 is the first tone 葱 which means scallion or green onions and the second character 油 油 is also the second tone 油 which means oil it could be any type of oil. And last but not least is our hua jun. Hua jun. It's the first tone and the third tone. Hua jun, which is the flower roll bun. So let's practice it again together. Cong you hua jun. Scallion rolls. Thank you for cooking with me. Let me know if you like the recipe by giving this video a thumbs up. It's only gonna take you a second, but it means a lot to me. I make a video like this every Thursday, so remember to hit that bell, then you will never miss out. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.